We are joined in the studio today by Ryan Bingham, who just has a new album out, American Love Song, dropped in the middle of uh, February. We're really excited to have you in after all these years, finally get a chance to visit. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you for having me. You know, it's been a long time since that last record. It took about four years, mm -hmm. uh, so it's good to have you back. I guess this one, did it start in a, in a cabin in New Mexico? <laughs> it did, very much so. Um, I've got a friend that lives out kind of in between Hatch and Deming, New Mexico, southwestern part of the state, and uh, it's got a little cabin out there on this place, and it's a pretty good little hideout. No phones, no internet, um, all that, that stuff, so the least distractions, the better. Yeah, you uh, you were actually born in New Mexico, but most of your childhood was sort of spent bouncing around West Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like um, Fort Worth, Dallas, Houston, Laredo. Uh, and a along in there, somehow or other, you know, you grew up. And uh, that, uh, those, that experience, uh, in a way, forms the basis for this album. At one point, you even sort of drew a road map. It did. It, and it really started kind of the four years leading up to it. Um, kind of one of the things that took so long to get to it, it was just I toured a lot on that last record. Um, we were on the road for almost two and a half years, you know, just out playing shows. And every time we thought it, we were done, we'd get offered to go play some more. And, you know, we would just kind of keep going until I finally I was like, man, I need to I need to go home and write some songs. And um, kind of in the process, I, s I started playing a lot of uh, acoustic shows where I would just sit down and with a guitar like this and play for an audience. And I started to kind of open up and talk about the songs a bit more and what I had written them about and where I was from. And um, I kind of found myself sitting at home and kind of drawing this road map out of all these different places that I had lived growing up. Um, I was born in New Mexico, and then from there we went to Bakersfield, California, and then back to West Texas and then all around that state. And just when you start kind of writing down that, or when I started to write that stuff down, I started to remember a lot of things that I'd forgotten about. and. Uh, kind of started writing these songs for this album and so it was very kind of autobiographical in a way and very personal but then uh, very influenced by just kind of current events as well and things that have taken place over the past few years so it's really a, a blend of all of that. You know the name of the album is American Love Song and uh, you know <laughs> love's not always pretty. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, uh, I guess one of the songs that was sort of a turning point was Beautiful and Kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Um, I think that just kind of writing songs has always been a way for me to kind of express myself and how the world is, affects me and um, just a direct reflection of, of that. And uh, that was definitely kind of a turning point with just think how things have been going the past few years uh, and it's just a kind of direct response to that. So when you set out to write some things that were you know politically driven you looked to a couple of good ones Woody Guthrie and, and Bill Withers mm -hmm. for like how to navigate that. Mm -hmm. What was it about them? You know, it's kind of one of those things that I've rediscovered. People ask me all the time, well, what's the first song that you learn how to play on the guitar? And um, it's always been this mariachi song that I learned to play when I was living down in Laredo when I was about 17. But kind of thinking more about the first songs that I learned how to sing, it was, you know, when I was in elementary school, when I was a kid, we'd sing This Land Is Your Land, and we would sing Lean On Me, you know, and all the kids, no matter where you were from or what color your skin was, you know, um, everybody held hands in class, and we all would sing these songs, and um, I think that kind of instilled something in me at a very young age, um, and kind of not thinking about it till now and writing songs of how profound those songs were and how... At the same time, they didn't necessarily alienate people or polarize people. And uh, kind of just seeing how divided people are these days, I, I wanted to approach it and write, be conscious and, and have an awareness with the songs and, and the record, but at the same time, um, try to be more inclusive, you know, and not uh, just kind of be someone that's up there on a soapbox and, and preaching stuff, you know, I'm, I'm obviously kind of learning as I go as well. So those are just two songs that uh, were very influential to me. And uh, I've tried to use an ex as, you know, examples to follow when there's so many bad examples out there. Right now, you, know. <laughs> you know, when you were sort of uh, accumulating 
influences and uh, things that you wanted to explore on this record. It was, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Tejano, the blues, jazz, hip hop, electronic music. You drew inspiration from Lightning Hopkins, uh, Towns Van Zandt, the Stones. Uh, when you uh, reached out to Charlie Sexton, who ended up being the co-producer, I think that one of the things that really helped was you didn't have to explain any of those things to him. Yeah, it was. You know, I've known Charlie for a few years, and um, we just kind of have a lot in common with those kind of musical influences. And that was definitely something when I was, you know, I wanted the music on the record to reflect all these different places that I grew up in and reflect those different kinds of music and different styles. And so um, I didn't have to explain that to Charlie. I just sent him the demos. He's like, oh, you got that lightning thing going on with this song or, you know, that kind of Stones Beggar's Banquet vibe or there's some Terry Allen-esque kind of concept ideas, you know, and so... Um, and at the same time, you know, wanting to kind of represent these areas, but like, you know, going into playing the blues, you know, it's like obviously that thing has been a, a well-beaten path and it's not necessarily about trying to be like a blues singer or trying to, it's, it's about kind of just representing something, you know, and um, carrying on that, that influence. And, um, and this, the, I feel like with the American love song, all it's all part of our story as as Americans, you know, all these different kinds of genres and these different, they all kind of make up what we are and uh, definitely have made up who I am, moving around a lot and kind of trying to find an identity, you know, and taking all these different pieces and just finally accepting and realizing that I'm not just kind of one thing, but I'm a, a mixed bag of all these places that I lived in and all these cultures and all these different styles of music and language and and things that have influenced me, so... That was part of it. You know, and, and I want to make sure that everybody sort of understands that this is, you know, the personal is political and the political is personal. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of a gray area. But this isn't a, a political screed. I mean, you've got love stuff in there, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's about yeah. you. And it's about how the world has affected you as you go along. Uh, you were so intent on the lyrics this time. Uh, and going back and editing mm -hmm. and maybe doing that a little bit more than you've done in the past. And you kind of wanted Charlie to just handle some of the arrangement side of it so that you could really pay attention to that story. Mm -hmm. I really did. And, I, and I'm still, you know, very, have a very fundamental understanding of music as in I'm still very much, I kind of play guitar down on the business end of it. You know, I'm, I'm still very kind of two and three chords, you know, of, of the way... You know, I, I don't have much of a musical background, so to say, is like reading and charting music. And Charlie's so well, well versed, and he's played so many different styles of music. And I really wanted his input on arranging those songs and letting me kind of focus on on the story and the narrative of it. And uh, he really, really helped out a lot with that. Recorded it mostly live in Austin and and Los Angeles mm -hmm. with minimal overdubs. Um, one of the things that's seemingly been true of you is that a lot of your music is you working out your stuff. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is that there was everything from tears to laughter in the studio, pretty emotional again. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, and it is playing them live, too. You know, some people have asked me before why I don't play certain songs some nights. And um, some of them, they're just a little too hard to get through every night, you know. Everybody has their days with that stuff. And... Um, I definitely write a lot of, a lot of personal things within the song, so some days are a little better than others. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Bingham is our guest. The new album is American Love Song. He's playing tonight at the Madrid. Last we knew, there was just a tiny little bit of tickets left. We were kind of thinking it's probably sold out, uh, but I wouldn't wait to try if you were thinking about it. Uh, we'd love to hear some music if we could. Yeah. Let's start with this one. This is uh, one off the record called Jingle and Go. Yeah. It's very much about playing in uh, the roadhouses down in Texas and um, when I first started to play, a lot of the places that I would perform and people didn't necessarily go there to listen to music, they went there to get drunk and fight, you know, so I would end up sitting in the corner and I'd pull my hat down over my eyes and play for tips kind of thing, but, but then on the same time, it's, I, I think about the inclusivity of music and how everybody, no matter how different you are or where you come from, everybody's got that little thing that makes you jingle and go. You know? Down at Banky's Roadhouse on 
Highway 69 Shake your dollar down in my cup And I sang the blues all night Oh, you know and that's how I jingle and go My kind of life is cherry My boots are crocodile Shake your dollar down in my cup And I sang the blues all night Oh, you know that's how my jingle and go And I got the struggle I got your hustle I got your low down blues and country shuffle You hear me talk, yeah I ain't no fool Like teach you things you just can't learn at school A dollar for some whiskey A dollar for some gin Shake your dollar down in my cup and I sing for all your friends. Oh, you know. And that's how my jingle and go. Oh, you know. And that's how my jingle. Shake your dollar down in my cup, my bag of rain will slide. Oh, you know, and that's how my jingle and go. And I got the struggle, and I got your hustle. I got your low down blues and funky shuffle. I play for money, well, that ain't no sin. Keeping what I'm selling, so y'all. Brian Bingham is our guest. That's Jingle and Go, a song we're very familiar with here at the bridge from the new album, American Love Song. Um, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get, you know, that song and the way that you introduced it is such a clear turning point for you in, in your actual life, right? And, and we'll get to that in just a second, but uh, I just wanted to go back to when you were 16. You know, you'd moved around a lot as a kid, and by the time you were 16, you end up out on your own. And, uh, you know, your mom got you a guitar, but you didn't know how to play it, so you kind of drug it around. You mentioned learning one mariachi song. I think it was on maybe a, your dad's porch or something. Mm -hmm. um, that was the only song you had for a year until yeah. you went out and got a, a book of guitar chords. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I moved down to Laredo and um, didn't know anybody down there. When I went down there, my dad was already living there, and he was a bit of a character, and he and he always had a revolving door of characters coming in out, out of the house. You know, there were always uh, those happy hours that started before noon and went till you know, <laughs> the early <laughs> you know, hours of the morning and um, on school nights. And um, this fella, had, he was coming over quite a bit for happy hour, and... He saw my guitar, this, my guitar sitting in the corner, and he picked it up and asked me if I knew how to play it, and I, I said I didn't, and he, but he saw I was interested in it, and uh, he said, well, check this out, and he played this, this song called La Malagueña, an old mariachi song, and um, he could tell I was hooked on it, and he said, well, sit down, and he would just show me one little piece of it at a time. Uh, it was like a little finger-picking part, a rhythm part, you know, and then... After a few weeks or so, he taught me how to put all the, the, the pieces together and I could play the song. And um, from there, kind of things all went their own direction, you know, and I went mine and um, that was all I knew how to play. And I just got so tired of playing it. I <laughs> went and got a book of. But it was still important to you, you know? Yeah, and it's really kind of the foundation for everything I, I do now. I mean, that was really kind of the way that I. I finger picked the guitar or strum. It's or those were the fundamental things that I learned that I still kind of use and everything. 
So you're 16 and you love music. You didn't really see that turning into a career at that point. And you got to find a way to make things go. So this is the part where I got to think that the publicist, I mean, this part of the story is a publicist dream, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, your uncle <laughs> is a, a bull rider. And so he gets you on the junior circuit and you, you turned into like a, a rodeo guy. Mm -hmm. It was part of that, uh, just growing, my family ranched out in New Mexico and, uh, Right about the time I was born, my grandfather had sold the ranch, and they all went to work in the oil fields, and that's why we moved around so much, well, part of it, you know. Um, but that was still kind of who I, everybody was. You know, my grandfather, was three or four generations had homesteaded there, and my grandfather was a cowboy, my dad and all his uncles were cowboys, and um, I grew up going to the junior rodeos when I was a kid, and so that was kind of a piece of me. Everywhere I would move, I would still continue to, to rodeo and ride bulls and kind of be in that world. And I started dragging my guitar along with me every weekend to these rodeos, and that was how I started playing, was just kind of writing these one and two chord songs about our weekend adventures going down the road. And, and my friends would talk me into playing on the tailgate in the parking lot, and that was, those were my kind of early gigs. And so that was how it started performing anyway for people and eventually you got to the point where you were you know showing up and playing bars mm -hmm. you know kind of the jingle and ghost story yeah and one night you got fifty dollars in tips and and that was a turning point it was great <laughs> it was sort of like uh, you know how i mean you were living incredibly cheaply at this point right mm -hmm. making every dime count yeah, it was just day to day, you know, and I would I was trying to rodeo on the weekends, but I, I wasn't really making it a, a living doing it. I always had to have some kind of job during the week, you know, whether it's framing houses or construction or digging ditches or whatever, or building fence. And so making that $50 that one night, you know, I was like, wow, I've been digging holes for this guy screaming at me all day and hadn't made that much money. So it, it, it didn't take long to figure out that the guitar felt better in my hands than that shovel did. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm sure that life, it, you know, it sort of happens over a period of time. There is a transition that happens here, right? Where, you know, all of a sudden you're playing music more and it's making more sense. You ended up going to L.A., Mm -hmm. Was it because of music and thinking that that's where you needed to be? Part of it. Part of it was running away from stuff, you know, which I've realized, you know, more over the years. You know, at that time um, when I was younger and going through all that stuff with just family and figuring out who I was and, you know, the music things, you know, I never had very big expectations of having a big career in music, but at the same time it kept me from digging ditches every day, and I was like from the situation that I was in before living wise and, um, you know, trying to keep up these jobs to pay rent in some trailer house somewhere with three roommates or whatever. And all of a sudden I had this truck with a camper on it and I was, it was just freedom. I was free to travel wherever I wanted to. I could go play pretty much on anybody's back porch or bar or cafe or coffee shop. I'm like, man, if I can make a hundred bucks a day doing this, I can go anywhere I want. I'm not tied down anywhere, and um, and I could run away from all my problems too. I thought, you know, I can get as far away from all this as I can, and um, I just felt like I'd played every bar and roadhouse between Texas and Louisiana and Oklahoma, and I was like, let's either go out to the East Coast or the West Coast, and uh, we flipped a coin and went out to California. So you end up living in the house of Uncle Rico mm -hmm. from Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> like, <laughs> how does this happen? <laughs> I mean, you when know, I ask these questions, yeah. are you struck by how unusual it is? Very, yeah, very much. Where I get to where I quit talking about it because most people don't believe me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we got we got out there and uh, met, you know, just kind of started meeting people. And we were at a birthday party of all things at somebody's house, and ended up kind of just sitting next to this guy John Grice on the couch, and we were, all played guitars and. He, turns out he's a uh, a musician. He was been had been playing in rock and roll bands all through his life before he really got into acting and all that. And he just asked us what we were doing in town. And um, at the time we had this old suburban that we had got and went out there and and uh, didn't have anywhere to stay or anything like that. And he just offered up his couch, you know. And we ended up crashing there for for a while. And then he ended up going out on tour with you. Yeah. We were leaving. Uh, we'd been there for a month or so, kind of just playing bars around L.A. and whatnot, and we were going to head back to Texas and play some gigs. And 
I remember that it was in the morning we were leaving and we were packing up and and uh, he was just kind of standing on his porch and he looked really sad. That Puppy we dog were guys, leaving. right? Yeah, and I thought he was about to cry and I just was like, man, and I was like, well, why don't you just go with us? And he's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, come on. And he just he's like, okay. And he's a wonderful photographer as well. And so he went and packed up some cameras and uh, grabbed his harmonicas and went and just rode around with us for a few months and. Had a blast. So I found a, one part of your story, different versions of it. In one version, it happened in Hollywood, and another version, it happened in Fort Worth. But you were playing a late night gig, and wasn't much of a crowd. One, of the only guys in there, just happened to be the lead guitar player for the Black Crows. Mm -hmm. That was actually probably the one of the first shows, maybe the first gig we played when we got to L.A. Um, I had this friend of mine out and. Uh, Valentine, Texas. His name was Boyd Elder, and um, he had spent some time in L.A. He was an artist and knew some folks out there, and he heard we were going that way, and he said, man, he said, I got my friend of mine has a club called the King King in Hollywood, and he called her up and said, you know, these kids are coming out there, and they could use a gig if you got room, and she said, yeah, you know, they can come play at 1 o'clock on Monday <laughs> night, you know, and it was like, we're like, yeah, for tips, and like, yeah, we'll take it, you know, so... We rolled in there, and it was. We went on about one in the morning, and it was Mark Ford was out there, and and uh, Carla, the girl that was running the bar, and uh, we played a little set, and that's where we met. Yeah. He uh, he saw something in you. Ended up producing your first two records. He did, yeah. He uh, after we played that set, he came up to us and he said, "Let's, I gotta make a record with you guys," and uh, that was kind of it. And I was off to the running. He got you an electric guitar and a slide too. Yeah, he he started it all. You know, I, I'd never played with the band really before either. You know, or any. It, you know, when I was out there and my friend Matt Smith was playing drums with me, and um, but he really taught me a lot of just about how to play with the band. And he gave me an electric guitar and uh, an amplifier and, and taught me how to tune it and how to plug it in and you know all of that stuff. So it was very much like going to music school when I met Mark. We'd love to hear another song if we could. Yeah, this one's uh, called Beautiful and Kind. And Sleep. 
Begging for a soup bone to eat, oh Lord The world is hardly beautiful or kind But I Well, I've been a dreaming Walking down this road alone at night Well, I Well, I've been a dreaming It's gonna lead to love and peaceful times, oh Lord It's gonna lead to love and peaceful times, oh Lord It's gonna lead to love Peaceful time Why So lonesome Walking down this road alone Why? So lonesome I only have this dream to ease my mind Oh Lord I only have this dream to ease my mind Oh Lord I only have this dream Ryan Bingham joining us today on the bridge. The new album is American Love Song. That's the song that we were talking about earlier, Beautiful and Kind, that kind of set the tone for the album. Uh, you know, hearing that song, I think it's also only right to let people know that your shows are exciting, fun shows. <laughs> yeah, they are. I try to uh, balance it out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, this process with you moving around a lot, uh, you know, I'm not sure that there's a really good solid linear story there. Mm -hmm. Part of, uh, part of that growing up as a musician was time that you spent with Terry Allen and Joe Ely around the campfires around Laredo. Mm -hmm. Uh, and those were seminal times for you. And you've got a big weekend coming up. You're going to try and at some level recreate that experience for an entire festival full of people. Yeah, we are, you know, I, uh, plan festivals over the years. Um, you know, every summer we go out and we travel around and play festivals and, uh, not all the time, but I'd say most of the time you end up and you're just in a big dusty parking lot with a big tent, you know, and there's, <laughs> there's not much of a vibe there, you know. There's not, you know, most of the bands aren't really hanging out together or collaborating with each other and stuff, and you just get up and you play your set and you get back in the van and you, and you get down the road. So I really miss that a lot, and I think when I... I don't think I would have a be doing this at all if I hadn't moved down around Austin, Texas and that hill country area. Just the people down there were so supportive of kind of young songwriters and, and musicians and um, they offered up those places where you could play every night, where the, whether it was their, their own front porch or a backyard around a campfire or a little cafe or a bar. And um, even if you only knew two or three songs you know, and didn't know how to tune your guitar, you could sit down and um, they'd let you play a few, you know, and they would tell you, they were like, next time you come back, learn how to, you know, tune, might want to tune that thing or whatever. But, <laughs> you know, they gave you a chance to grow and to learn, and I'm uh, very yeah. thankful for that. And so uh, I wanted to do something in that, you know, that vibe, that kind of communal thing where everyone's sitting around sharing stories and, and, uh, and singing songs for each other. So that's what it's about. Got a pretty good lineup. Yeah, there's going to be some fun bands coming, yeah. Uh, like old 97s, Coulter Wall, Margot Price, mm -hmm. and a lot more. Yeah, a lot more. Yeah. So this is the this is the first one, right? This is the first one, yeah. We're going to try to do it every year. Yeah. 
Yeah. Very cool. It's the if you want to keep notes, I I don't know if it's sold out or not, but you know I think the Friday is, but they're on Saturday there's still plenty, yeah. And and you got enough time to drive down to Luckenbach, Texas. That's right, yeah. <laughs> For the Western Festival. There you go. It's a beautiful place too. It's outside Austin and uh that's where Willie Nelson used to have his Fourth of July picnic, and it's just these big, you know, hundred-year-old oak trees everywhere, and there's a, a river that runs through the place. So it's a, it's a nice day just to even hang out there, you know, even if there was nothing going on. So that's what it's a, it's a pretty special place. You know, this really has been enough of an interview to, you know, call it a life, <laughs> but like you've got this. Oh, entire other life too, right? Uh, and it really started off with Crazy Heart. Mm -hmm. And you wrote The Weary Kind, uh, T-Bone Burnett co-write, uh, and you ended up playing a bit part in that film. Um, you know, you know, it hadn't been that long since your first record, and The Weary Kind, it, it, like it did okay. It <laughs> did okay. It won you a Tony, won you a Grammy, won you an Oscar. It did kind of okay. Uh, that had to be mind blowing. It, it was pretty surreal, you know, especially kind of living out of a van, you know, and then all of a sudden going into that uh, experience. Um, it was something that uh, definitely kind of came out of left field and was just like, it was just such a roller coaster. Yeah. So, what was more surreal, winning those awards or being in front of a camera? For a major motion picture, no, I'd say the 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 acting part was the most the best part of it. You know, it's kind of the artistic side of it, and getting to meet and work with people like Jeff Bridges um, was pretty amazing. Because you know, initially they, I was just gonna, I wasn't gonna be in the film. It was just they wanted the song, and then we all started hanging out, and and Scott was like, "Man, I, I wanted to get have you guys in the film. You know, be the band." And I'm like, "Okay," and. Uh, and Jeff was just such a nice guy, and every day we, we were working on music anyway, and so we would go in the backyard, and he would, like, practice my lines with me and stuff. And so that was a pretty cool experience, you know, yeah. for him to take, as busy as he was, to take 30 minutes out of his day and uh, say, hey, come over here, this, I'll help you out a little bit. And uh, so that's probably my fondest memory of that whole time. That's incredibly generous. Mm -hmm. You you also uh, married an artist. I did, yeah. And she uh, did a film in 2015 called A Country Called Home, mm -hmm. and uh, and you were in that. Mm -hmm. And then we turn around, and in 2017, Scott Cooper, the guy that was sort of behind Crazy Heart, came back um, with a film called Hostels, mm -hmm. and you were in that again. Um, it helped a little bit that you knew how to ride a horse. Yeah, that, that helped a little bit. He called me up and said, Bingham, I'm making a Western. He goes, I know you ride horses. Let's go. So, I think that you're leaving out one part of the quote, though, <laughs> where he said, I'm going to write you in. And then, it's not going to last very long. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was the quote? It was like, uh, if, if, you know, I'll write you the part, and if, if we start out and you're good, you'll stay. Oh, that was for the... Um, Taylor Sheridan with the Yellowstone, this oh, show called that's, Yellowstone. That's right. yeah. yeah, he that same kind of deal with that though. You know, I I met Taylor and he and uh, he's like, I, you know, can you write a few songs for this series I got coming up? And and then he found out that I used to rodeo and could ride and all that. And he said, well, you got to be in it. And uh, he said, I don't have a part for you, but he goes, let's just make something up. And so I said, well, what do you want to do? And he goes, I got it. He goes, we got this character called Walker. And he goes. He goes, you know, if, you, if, uh, if you're good, we'll keep you in it. He goes, if you suck, we'll just kill you off. <laughs> <laughs> so, I said, all right, let's go. <laughs> they haven't killed you off yet. Yeah, um, I'm still in there. Uh, four episodes in season one, and the second season uh, debuts uh, June 19th. And I think you're in it a little bit more this time. Yeah, yeah. A little bit more this time. That's crazy. You know, uh, going back, sorry, I got those uh, mixed oh, up, but okay. going back to Hostiles, um, you know, I really thought it was fascinating that you play a part in there, and it's your character who sings. And so, before you wrote the song, you created before you created the song, you created the character, mm -hmm. and then wrote through that character. Mm -hmm. Well, I was trying to, you know, I guess I didn't really create just from the name of the character. You know, and Scott had wrote in that my my the name was Malloy, and so. And it was a period piece, you know, and so I was just trying to think um, 
what this guy, if he was going to play music in this film and how it would work out. And first off, they're, you know, it's a kind of traveling party. They're all horseback going from New Mexico to Montana or whatever. So it's like, what's the guy going to bring, you know? <laughs> Is he going to be lugging around his J45 guitar up in the mountains, you know? Like, <laughs> so I was like, he's probably, you know, of Irish descent with his name. And maybe he'd play a mandolin that, you know, maybe his mother had given him before he came over to the States and got mixed up in everything. So that was just kind of, uh, I was trying to sort out how that would be realistic, you know? Well, can't wait to see uh, the new season of Yellowstone. And uh, the other films are clearly available anywhere you want to go to find your entertainment. The new album is called American Love Song. It's Ryan Bingham. He's playing tonight over at the Madrid. You can find out more at ryanbingham.com. We'd love one more song if we could. Right. Yeah. Let me do this one. It's, uh, it's called Wolves. Keep the wolves at bay, if you may. On away. When I was just a child, I knew I was afraid. But there was nothing to gain, I found by running the other way. I had to stand my ground and keep the wolves at bay. Could not take no more and had my feel Stars had faded from my eyes and run from looks at kill And there was no one coming around to save me from the fray I had to stand my ground and keep the wolves at bay I knew somehow that there would come a day when I stood my ground and kept the wolves at bay. Years have gone by, the calling carries on. The scars above my eye are still tender to the bone. No, I've settled down, I hear the children say. They have to stand their ground and keep the wolves at bay. Well, I knew somehow. There will come a day When I stood my ground Kept the wolves at bay Bingham, our guest today here on the bridge. The new album is American Love Song. That song, Wolves. You were when you were moving around all the time. When you were, you were always the new kid in town. Mm -hmm. um, it's just too bad that you didn't have a you know a crystal ball where you could say, "Hey, wait a second, I'm going to win an Oscar. <laughs> I'm going to win you know a, a Grammy. I'm going to win a Golden Globe." Yeah. yeah, I don't know. You know, I uh, I'm very appreciative and thankful for all the things that have come my way but uh you know and i think back on all of that and sometimes wish it hadn't gone how it did but at the same time i probably wouldn't be here now if it hadn't so i just gotta keep looking out the windshield not the rear view mirror yeah, yeah there you go <laughs> 
Ryan Bingham, our guest again. The new album is American Love Song. Uh, th I always do this. Um, I know that the life on the road is not easy, and you know you're not only taking time away from your day to do it, but you got your kids on the road, so mm -hmm. we're taking that time too. And uh, I know it's a sacrifice, and it's deeply appreciated. Well, thank you. It's same here. I appreciate all the support for sure. Ryan Bingham, our guest today, live on the bridge.